Alexis is a very good friend, a consciousness traveler, a um, fellow shaman sister, and we are here to talk about self-love today. Alexis, it's over to you. Hi, Steffi. Um, well, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, uh, self-love, what a big, big topic. Um, it's uh, basically, I mean, there are many forms of self-love. I mean, there's many forms of love um, in energy terms. Well, everything is energy. Um, uh, love in its purest form is the highest frequency. Um, it's source, it's uh, zero point. Um, it's, I believe, where we all come from. Um, so, and all humans have, I think, the ability, well, they do, the ability to resonate with that frequency. We all have felt it or sensed it in some shape or other, um, consciously or unconsciously. Um, and it's a beautiful thing. Um, um, as uh, I think self-love is, is massive. Um, I think it's at its base, it's our core fundamental wounding, um, collectively speaking. Um, you know, our lack of self-worth, um, we can't do it, imposter syndrome, you know, all of that stuff is encompassing in our ability to actually deeply unconditionally love ourselves and I think if we did unconditionally love ourselves then a lot of the problems that we face um, or humanity face at the moment would just fall away I think um, because we would be secure in our in our beliefs um, we would be able to celebrate each other without envy and out, without all those sort of third dimensional um emotions um and frequencies that come up in in the third dimensional field um, um so i think many of us also know already um that that's what we're striving for i mean we're sort of slightly beaten over the head with it at some you know some some level online you know you go and look up how do i do self-love i mean there's lots of different ways of doing it um, but I wanted to sort of t talk today or break it down into three things. We are, I believe, um, or looking at us as human beings as a whole. So that's um, spiritually, mentally and physically. And I thought that possibly it might be a good idea to tackle this on in those three categories. I don't know I think how that, that sounds, sounds. Perfect. That sounds perfect. Um, so basically, I think the biggest um, act of self-love that we can bestow on ourselves um, is living a, a soul-aligned life. You know, I think we're all seeking um, what our purpose is, you know, at a fundamental level, if we're honest with ourselves, you know, we, we're, we're, that's a big, big question. Um, what am I here to do? What's my purpose? Um, and that's really hard to find, I think. And a lot of us get caught up in a, in a world um, and in jobs and in a life that isn't actually soul aligned. And I think that then we can run into a lot of problems. Um, uh, and, you know, then life doesn't flow. Um, and, you know, we're living in an age at the moment where, you know, mental health is at an all time low. Um, and um, I think, that if we can find our soul, you know, what we're really, really here to do, you know, what do we really love doing? What inspires us and what excites us? Um, I think if you can discover it, um, things just very easily slot into place. Um, and, you know, suddenly all those little building blocks, like Tetris, um, uh, and your life just flows. Um, how, how do we do that? Do you think? I mean, what steps? I mean, there are lots of there are lots someone. of ways. There are lots of modalities out there that can um, help you. Um, uh, for example, you know, well, first of all, uh, on a personal level, you can what you know, 
what actually does excite you? What, what um, do you really enjoy doing? Um, we're all here for a reason. As you know, we, are all, we all have our spot in this world and that spot is uniquely ours. So we are all here for a purpose. We are all here to bring something to the table. Um, and all of those are, are equally valid. And I think when collectively we can think of everything as being equally valid, then um, again, I think it would make life a lot easier for everybody yeah. because then we can start championing each other and just celebrating that. Um, but where I started looking into it was um, I started looking into evolutionary um, astrology, which is fantastic help. Uh, human design, which is another modality. Um, uh, you can use the Enneagram. Um, uh, you know, there's loads of books out there on it. Um, loads of YouTube videos. Um, there's some great books. Um, I've just listened to a podcast with Jennifer Freed, who's written two books. Um, uh, uh, book, uh, a Map of the Soul and um, Use Your Planets Wisely. And that really just gives you a huge insight to who you are. I mean, human, human design is unbelievable because it not only tells you um, or confirms what you kind of know you're good at already and what you love doing, but it also tells you a lot of stuff you're unconsciously because it, it, it looks at your conscious body and your un unconscious body. And that's massively empowering knowing that stuff. Um, um so those are both ways and i think it's important you can go down. that they're very accessible so this is not finding someone that you need to pay a lot of money to 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 get a reading it really is one can figure that out oneself one can go to uh i think it's astro.com you can get, mm -hmm. your, get your chart you know, your, um your birth time you can chart that in and you can get that sort of map and then you can read the book and you can figure it out yourself so these are very accessible modalities um mm -hmm. that we're talking about yeah um very much so um and uh yeah and just they've got i mean for starters raising vibrations which are the vorsters simon and jennifer they have a huge um online presence um, and just listening to, to their uh, YouTube channel uh, is massively enlightening um, and it can, um, but equally they, they run an astrology school and they have a lot of online courses that are really very reasonably priced. Um, mm -hmm. And they're all pre-recorded sessions that you can do. Um, and if it's something that really resonates with you and you get, then you can spend more money and go and do it if you so choose. Um, but there are loads and loads of different, there is no right path. There is no right path, um, but there are lots of different ways that you can go about it. And they are all right because they all speak to different, we all speak a different language when it comes to that. And some things resonate and some things don't, and that's absolutely yeah. fine. Yeah. I mean, I think what you said earlier, I think this really resonates and I think it resonates with everybody that uh, in order to 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 potentially align yourself more with your soul part or your higher self or whatever you want to call it to really find that uh, self love and that purpose that gives you that self love is anything that raises your vibration so you know what do you enjoy which hobbies do you like which kind of books do you like to read which kind of music do you listen to all of those things surrounding yourself by people who just make you feel really good you know and do a lot more of that and then all of a sudden you get to a space where you really have been able to um to be quite joyful well, I mean, absolutely. I mean, the human experience is meant to be one of joy, happiness and abundance. It wasn't yeah. meant to be a slog. Yeah. Um, we've had to experience that because of we live in a world of duality. So you, we've had to experience that to be able to see the next the next um, part. Um, but absolutely. Um, and it's OK. You know, I think then I was the next thing is the mental, you know, going along the mental, mentally, how do we 
could we do this? And really it comes down to allowing ourselves. And, you know, we have this amazing guilt, I think as women as well, I think we have this guilt that um, if we're doing anything that we enjoy, it's selfish in some way. Yeah. And that's just so, such a, an old, old way of thinking. And it just doesn't, um, no, it's not the case and it doesn't need to be the case. You know, I think um, it's that old adage, isn't it? If you don't shine, then no one around you can shine. So being the mother or the central, central part of the, uh, of the family or anyone, actually, it could be anyone, you know, you want everyone around you to be happy. And I think if you're happy and you're shining, it almost gives permission for other people to do that as well. Absolutely. And um, and I think that that's really, really um, important. Um, so allowing yourself that it's okay. And, um, you know, without judgment, you know, it's, it's back to that same thing of, of, you know, judgment, we aren't worthy, you know, all of that stuff again, that, that's going back to our core woundings. Um, but I think we've come to a time now where that has no space. You know, we've done that, been there, done that. Um, it's not valid anymore. Um, and it's also not true. <laughs> so um, I think that that would be my key thing to do mentally. Um, and then going on. So would to... you suggest, for example, to do a list and say, right, what are all the things that I deny myself the whole time because I feel that I'm not worthy or I'm not, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not productive or, you know, I shouldn't be doing this. Should, 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 should one make a list and just work that off and say, okay, but I'm going to have, you know, an hour of reading because I really enjoy that. And I'm going to do X, Y, and Z because I deny myself that all the time. I'm going to have that piece of cake or whatever it may be. And just exercise that very consciously every day. And always when the thought comes in, Ah, uh, you know, can I allow myself to do that? To just for once say enough, I am actually going to allow myself to do that. Absolutely. It's about shifting your focus, I think. Yeah. And yeah. and um and also I think to start off with, you know, no one, you would never dream of speaking to a best friend or someone that you love the way you speak to yourself. I mean, we all know that. Yeah. But it's actually noticing that. And how the minutiae of detail, I mean, you speak that, that little voice in your head all the time. And it's, I think to start, it's just noticing it. And by noticing it, you put space between yourself and the thought. And therefore, you're able to sort of step back and say, no, actually, do you know what? I'm going to have that piece of cake. Or, you know, I'm, I'm um, not as bad as I thought. Or... Um, You know, I have, a, you know, it, 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 or, you know, stop or notice just the negative rhetoric that we all have in our head because we all do. Don't be under any illusion. Everyone does. Um, so, yeah, I think shifting your focus is a massive thing um, to be able to um, accomplish, really. Um, um, we're all amazing. Every human being is amazing. And, um, and it's OK to think that. And it's not that you're more amazing than someone else because we are all amazing. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's okay. <laughs> and I, I think love had that you book. say that, Alexis, because I just, it gives me goosebumps. It's beautiful. Um, but I think it's important to, to, to remember that um, because it's been drummed into us a lot, just, you know, from infancy that, um, you know, we're pitted against each other from childhood. Um, and so you're always thinking that I'm not as good as someone else. And that's just so wrong. Yeah. Um, it's we we're just different, and we're meant to, and we're meant to be different. Um, yeah. And um, that's an amazing thing. Otherwise, if we were all the same, then the world would stop, wouldn't it? I mean, it would just be ridiculous. Um, and then I think, physically speaking, um, I'm moving on. Um, physically speaking, I think listening to our body our own bodies I think that's what's really really come forward for me 
you know, um, we're bombarded by what's worked for other people. So it takes away your own power as far as listening to your own body. You know what works for you. Or if you really listen, you can find out what your body likes and what your body doesn't like. Um, so especially as women, especially as women going through their 40s, early 50s, you know, that the change, you know, I think it's um, what works for one won't work for another. And um, it's about trusting your instincts um, and really trusting your instincts because that's honoring yourself as well. You know, that's self love. Um, that's validating yourself to yourself. And I think that that's really, really important. And I also think treating yourself, you know, treat yourself to those flowers or treat yourself to those little things, surround yourself with the things that you love and the people you love, like you said. You know, it's really, really important, um, especially in your home environment, I think. Um, you want to feel safe, you want to feel secure. Um, and all of those things are really valid. And it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. It can be something that's totally bananas. But if it works for you, then it works for you. And that's just amazing. Um, uh, I love yeah. that. I love that, Alexis, because I think, you know, it sounds so easy. It's so hard to do. And we've had so many uh, centuries of conditioning. I think that we just have to become so conscious, as you said, and really be so aware of all of these loops that we are constantly stuck in. And the same for our bodies. You know, we push them to breaking point. We don't reach out for help because we think uh, we are not uh, worthy of the help or or whatever we think, right? And so I think you you put it beautifully um it was um i a couple of years ago laurie ladd brought out she's another prolific youtuber um um and she put out a video um and i can give you the link to it um and she gave one really really simple hack so you can do all of this stuff but she just nailed it as she if you get into her work you'll see she's just absolutely fantastic she tangibly gets everything and has an unbelievable way of explaining stuff um but she gave one simple hack that she channeled um to bypass everything and um it went something along the lines of when you see a newborn baby or you see a puppy or you see anything any baby or any you know any baby calf any anything you it gives you that reaction you get every human being has it you know um and it's that uh inherent reaction you see the innocence you see the unbridled joy their unconditional love and the trick is to really immerse yourself in that feeling, imagine it, immerse yourself in that feeling, really um, get yourself in that frequency and then turn it around and then project it onto yourself. So put yourself um, as the baby. So you're looking at yourself like you would be looking at the baby and it takes practice. But if you can practice that, then that bypass absolutely everything that you can read online, <laughs> that I've just told you now, um, that, um, I mean, obviously all of those things have their place and they're really fun and really lovely things to do as well. But that I thought just was so simple um, and really resonated with me. And if you can do it, um, it's just basically as simple as that. On that note, I think this is a perfect conversation. <laughs> thank you so much, Alexis. I love oh, it. Oh, lovely. Well, thank you so much. Um, I hope that that uh, is okay. <laughs>